glory, hallelujah. It's time to elevate and exalt our majesty, majesty of majesties. And I got my dog here, and dog backwards is God. But guess what? Any dog uh, has unconditional love. We all know that. Do you think that God would make a creature like a dog that has greater love than he? Do you think that God would allow a man like me, a father who loves all of his kids with all of his heart and soul unconditionally, could I possibly have a love that's greater than our everlasting father? Rough. Nope. Nope. He said no. Nope. So come along and put on your happy face. And if you will, then guess what? The whole world can start walking in a kindness that will let go before us. Mm -hmm. Oh, I like the sound of that. Can you hear that one? Whoa, it sounds like I just said some helium. Wow, you won't even believe it. But guess what? It's time to be as little kids, and I vote for that. And so, therefore, it's time to raise up the candle of change. For the Lord's word of patience has come forth during these days of the trial of all flesh, Revelation 3.10, which is COVID. And in these days of the roaring bear chewing on Crimea, Donetsk, and Luhansk of uh, Daniel 7, 5, vision of the great Soviet bear chewing on the three ribs of the king of the south in the latter days of the prophecy of the latter day king of the north invading the king of the south in Daniel 11. That is what exactly is happening now. And it says that it would happen in the latter days. I don't know about you, but Putin is the king of the north. And he has the uh, uh, powers of... Uh, of a dictator because that is exactly what he is. So praise God that unless these days were cut short by God's own word flowing as a river of his love that uh, no flesh could be saved. But he is making a way by tearing down the veil that has covered over us. Because in this hour he is letting his rainbow promises come forth so that we could understand that the true meaning of the rainbow is that God keeps his promises. Uh, and a rainbow is a most definite promise of sunshine after rain. It's a promise of calm after storms, of joy after sadness. It's a promise of peace after pain. And it's a promise of love even after loss. And whatever your cross, whatever your pain, God will always send you rainbows after the rain. And so it's time to be an optimist, to see rainbows uh, when there is rain. And we need to dance in the rain like everybody's watch watching and we should not even care. So realize now more than ever, uh, as this Kingdom Age channel starts being liked by people, people that are not fools because life is like a rainbow and you need both the sun and the rain in order to make all the colors appear uh, and so when you see the beautiful reds and blues and greens and crimson colors and hues of fiery red know that the fire of his love is coming forth as great heart shaped balloons floating up in our midst so that we can put on a happy face and turn our frowns upside down uh, as we glorify the Lamb who was slain before the foundation of the earth for all people of his love. So realize that when it rains, it's time to look for rainbows. And when it's dark, then it's time to look for stars. And uh, more than ever, because uh, of the hour in which we are in days of Elijah, we have to realize that life gives us friends in order to make sure that we even have some rainbows. And also that we would come to see clearly through a glass darkly, no more do we have to 
Look, we can now shine as the stars in the sun when we realize God's word of Malachi 3, 1 that has prepared his way. Uh, and that is the only word that could because it is the word of his unconditional love uh, and total equality of all mankind uh, so that we can all get along in the sandbox. For he says to all mankind, Jeremiah 32, 27, he says, I am the good shepherd over all the flock of man John 10 and I say verily verily unto you I am your God you are my people if you are people with your love alive as a little child so leave the land of the walking dead if your love has become but a noun where you have only an appearance of godliness but deny the power of love who should be Christ living in you because nobody is no damn good says the spirit of love uh, but praise God Jesus in us Isa Yeshua Emmanuel is our love of the ages and he is our goodness and that's what makes us good and there are, most people are good even if they have a, a, a little uh, a little bit of love left but it's time to enlarge those embers so that they go out not so realize it's time to see that th through every shade of light and every dark uh, we have uh, you have been a prism we have been a prism unto the Lord to help us see the colors of his world if we will let the light just shine through us. So we need to stay positive because rainbows often appear when we least expect them and we need them the most. Uh, and in this hour, it is really time to, to keep on going uh, because we are to be trailblazers of his rainbow promise. And he promised never again to destroy mankind through a flood, but he did not say he would not send a flood of his love. For these are the latter days of, of Acts 2 and Job 2. It is promised in the latter days that God would pour out his spirit as a flood of love over absolutely all flesh in these days of uh, that are exactly like days of Noah. So while we have impending doom, sure fire that would arise and destroy all of mankind, all birds, all fish, as Zechariah uh, says, Zephaniah 1, 1 actually. Uh, but praise God that God's word has reopened. Daniel 12, 9, God's word had to reopen again for the shattering of the power of the holy people. The canons of all religion must shatter because they have to realize that if they have not the God of all mankind, they have a false God according to the word of love. And so in this hour, it's time to get with new programs of new godly understandings that were preordained for this latter day hour of his love's greatest power. I am Daniel, latter day one, Daniel 12, 13, the messenger from the north, Isaiah 41. And I come preaching love, hope, peace, and faith, and I have known nothing but rejection for all of my hard work. But that's okay. It was foretold of me that I would do everything in vain. And that's fine with me. But praise God, so shall his word be that goeth forth from his mouth. It shall not return void unto him. For the lion of Zion has roared, who can but prophesy? And all not listening to the prophecy here at this channel are disobedient against the word of God. For the word of God declares in Thessalonians that concerning prophecy, we must inspect it most carefully and keep all that is good. People do not even want to hear it because it messes up their rah-rah club. Because his uh, perfect love now makes all faith obsolete on planet earth as Hebrews 8 last sentence rightly declares. And so in this hour, God desires his elect of love, his beloved, to hold fast. Uh, and then there are times in this hour of his love's greatest power when we must hear the word of prophecy in our hearts. And for that reason, uh, Muhammad said that we have no ground to stand upon unless we stand upon the gospel of love 
and the prophets and all revelation coming to you from the Lord. And these are the days of his latter day, Elijah, restoring all things, Matthew 17, 11. Uh, and if that did not happen, the word would be a lie because Jesus said that this would happen before his return. People just enjoy ignoring me. I must, uh, I must, uh, I don't know. But one thing for sure, um, if we will hold fast, then we will see clearly that we are God's children of his holiness. And we can be taught well that we must hold on to our dreams of love. For if our dreams die, then life becomes like a bird with no wings to fly, becomes like a beaver with no wood to build with. And people like that would live as a blind person who can't see any joyful face at all. And all those without hope shall perish because Isa Yeshua, Jesus, Emmanuel himself, uh, is mankind's greatest hope of love. And he alone is the living dream of God's adoration towards all of us, in spite of our unworthiness to receive it. It is a gift of God given without repentance. And only that beacon uh, within the darkness provides people with hope so that they can safely arrive at the other side of his blessedness, since his warning lights will help up any of us if we pay attention to stay on the correct course, thereby avoiding the worst reefs of devastation that would otherwise be bringing us only death when we finally crash into the dangerous satanic obstacles. But praise God that the presence of love brings forth hope unending. And in this hour, we have to see more than ever that where hope is, there also does that lighthouse of troubled water shine his strongest light as a laser beam. And man, if you're on the receiving end of that, you can get a good suntan, that's for sure, because he's the sun of love arising to smile upon us and, and flash his pearly whites that are much more white uh, with his glory and his sinlessness and holiness than the pearly gates of heaven. And wherever the brightest dreams exist, there also resides our giver of good dreams, for he's the dream that would come true for everyone who finally becomes sick of our own unloving nightmares. Hope always springs eternal, and our living hope in infinitely intercedes for all the dreams of health and vitality and spiritual wealth to come to pass for all people of his love who are gladly following after his wondrous light to, to help lead them out of harm's way. And for those reasons, hope in the Lord, our Lord of love of always, is like the glorious light of the resplendence of beauty that explodes within us like a firefly that lights up the darkest sky and like a power that so easily flows through any electric eel. For God is the giver of the most blessed dreams and moreover anyone maintaining hope in that Lord of hope never hopes for his shining ever to diminish within them, but otherwise we want it to flare up and to consume us with his love. Uh, since he gives our dreams the fullest meaning and our aspirations he gives clarity and our inspirations he gives power to. And only by the hope that Isa Yeshua, Jesus Christ Almighty offers are all children of the Most High elevated to where his presence will even make our heaven sent hope to be made into a reality since fantasies have always been only Satan's brainchild, which only serves to a distraction for us. So thank God Satan has been removed in accordance with Daniel 12, 1. For he was the accuser of the brethren, uh, night and day before the Lord accusing us. And in this hour when God gives his covenant, he says, I am your God, you are my people. I forgive your iniquity, I will never remember it. Right there, Satan was snookered, had to be removed. Otherwise, as an accuser of the brethren, he would have made God into a liar. God could not have even have said that to us, that he would never remember our iniquity. Because if he did, he'd be a liar, and his word would be nothing more than toilet paper. And so in this time, nor should any lovers of our love of the ages ever 
ever even consider uh, to stop hoping for the sweet by and by. That shall be our reward as our hope evermore becomes real. Uh, so the reality of hope is rooted in emotions, people. And we need to realize more than ever that hope is therefore the substance of things dreamed of through faith, the reality of which always comes to pass unto all of those patient who will trust Christ to bring fulfillment to their greatest desires. But as the faithful pray for their wishes, they must also bear in mind that unanswered prayer is sometimes much, much better for them than they originally besought the Lord over. For the answer to our prayer sometimes is very hurtful. And so we have to realize now that if a person's hopes are of selfish uh, love and uh, strings attached, manipulations, then such dreams uh, fulfilled would surely bring them even more grief, even more pain, and even more trials of a worse kind that they never even hoped for. But insofar as the perceived promises of the rainbow uh, from our Lord are concerned, the hopes uh, ongoing, born of love, makes the fulfillment of those promises, uh, makes our hearts sad that we waited so long to receive it when it's always been right there in front of us. All we had to do is tap our shoes three times and we would have been back in Kansas, back in the Garden of Eden, back uh, ascending to the great white cloud within a moment of a moment experiencing the rapture of his love in motion. And so it's time uh, to see more than ever that it does make any heart sad when the manifestation of such is slow in coming or remains unseen because faith in such was always maybe unrealistic uh, and not of God in the first place. That happens. Well, sometimes our flesh gets in the way and we can't see the forest for the trees. But realize now that the flesh of mankind easily clouds over the spiritual seeing of all of us, causing many of us to falsely believe that we should be expecting things that actually come forth from only foolishness rather than from faith. Faith. So it's time to get with his understandings and let our love free because we have leaned incorrectly to our own understandings and we have uh, lifted up a false God in this world who has conditional love when his covenant the unbreakable law of love says that is incorrect because there are no conditions and that is what he foretold before he gave his covenant in Jeremiah 31 it is written that he had desires now in these latter days so that his kingdom age could even arise that he wants to remove all the yoke of burden from all religious uh, dogma uh, that is not built upon his unconditional love and all the burden to trade in our, our bad unloving religiosity to trade it in for loving spirituality so our kindness can go before us because only then could God heal the lands as Jeremiah 30 24 promises us if we will just hear him roar louder than ever before and he shouts the word love